Hello, welcome. We're live again. It's Thursday and that means it's Thursday Q&A live across the Digital DJ Tips Network. That means Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. Well, we're here again and the reason we're here is to talk DJing for the best part of an hour. And as always, I cannot wait. It's me, Phil Morse, here in the studio. Uh, our controller of the day, DJ system of the day, is the XDJ RX3, the new one from Pioneer DJ. Maybe you've got questions about this unit. Maybe you've got questions about music or about promoting yourself, getting gigs. Maybe you're struggling with DJ techniques or maybe uh, you just want to chat. What's going on in the world of DJing? And there's quite a lot going on in the world of DJing, there always is, uh, but over on Digital DJ Tips, our website for the last um, week, we've been covering things like, well, we've got an ultimate guide to mixing house music. So if you love house uh, and want some tips and tricks, then head and look at that. There's even a free poster you can download. So can't say fairer than that. But also we've got the news that Beatport is now offering a thousand offline tracks for its pro users who use Beatport Link, the streaming service, instead of 50, which is obviously a massive improvement. Uh, we have got um, Angelo, our tutor Angelo, and we've got JFB giving tips on how to make routines that win uh, that win battles. So uh, we've got a video from Tuesday there and I've also got all the tips up on the website there as well. Um, also news about Zip DJ getting a relaunch, new samples for Novation Circuits, a lot lots going on in the DJ world uh, that you may want to chat about. But really this is all about you today. It's about what you want to talk about which is why I'm sat here and not over there because here is where I can see all the comments coming in from all our channels. So hello everyone to all our regulars. Hi to GM, hi to Mixmaster G over there in Holland. Uh, hello to Trims TV, uh, BCEF Madeira and Adrian and Papa D over there in Florida and Gerald. If you want to ask a question today rather than just say hello, that's, uh, that's what this is all about. Uh, make sure you use a hashtag, hashtag ASK. Hashtag ask, uh, which means I can, when we get really busy a little bit later on, I can filter by just hashtag ask and then I have all my questions in front of me. Don't ask questions more than once. If I can, I will answer you. I will ignore questions I see more than once. And if you want to be in the best place to get your question answered, well, that is Facebook. And the reason is that all the questions you ask on Facebook, they stay underneath even when we're finished, whereas the ones you ask on YouTube, they disappear uh, and they don't come across to the main, to the main, uh, uh, to the main comments afterwards. So Facebook is the best place to hang around for these broadcasts. Uh, Alan is sneakily watching this at work. So good on you, Alan. Hello to Christian, uh, to Craig in uh, uh, over in OKC. Hello to DJ uh, Mutsang. Uh, and to, uh, I can't say hello to everyone, but I'm just picking at random. Hi to Joe. Uh, and uh, Howdy Gangsters says you don't like my music. Right, our first real question uh, is from Trims TV, who says, um, which microphone is good to use for a DJ set? And that is a very good question. We actually have a uh, an article coming up on the best microphones for DJing with because it's something we get asked a lot. It's actually been written and it's going to be live on the website in the next uh, in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. But let's talk microphones for a second. So there's there's ultimately two types of microphone. If we're going to roll all the way back, uh, that you're going to see out there, uh, there are condenser microphones and dynamic microphones. Condenser microphones are the ones you see in studios. This is actually a condenser microphone I've got here. If I just try and pull it into view, you'll see it. I'm not actually using it at the moment trying to get it in front of the camera. Uh, I can't give you a good shot of the condenser microphone, not without taking it off. Anyway, this is a condenser microphone. Uh, it's on a stand, it's got a, a mount to stop it, you know, so it, so it's isolated from bangs on the table and stuff. It's, it's studio mic. They're designed for studios and environments where it's very quiet anyway, because condenser mics give you a really nice, crisp, clear, um, Audio signal, I'm not using that now by the way, you'd be hearing all kinds of banging. They give you a really nice crisp clear audio signal, but at the expense of picking up everything around them, usually anyway. And they're more delicate. And sometimes they need power. A lot of the time they need power. So that's why you see DJ audio interfaces and mixing desks with what they call phantom power, which can send power to the microphone to make it work. They're not very good for DJ and they're great for having for podcasts and studios and stuff. For DJ and what you want is a nice, good, dynamic microphone. Uh, a dynamic microphone is the kind of microphones you see people holding in their hands and screaming into and sticking on stands and shoving into drums and guitar amps and stuff. These things uh, last forever. They are um, 
there's very famous ones out there. The Shaw SM58, for instance, is probably the most iconic one. Uh, and the good thing about these is they don't need power. So you just plug them into anything and they work. And they're very, very good at shoving away any noise that's going on in the background and only picking up what's right in front of them, literally. You move it away like that and keep talking and record it. By the time you get it to an arm's length, you really, your volume's like 10% what it was when you were here. So that means that in a really loud environment, uh, a microphone, a dynamic microphone held up to your mouth is just perfect uh, because it will cut out all the background noise. Uh, the downside of dynamic microphones is they don't give as loud a signal so you need to have a mixer that can take a dynamic microphone. Luckily all DJ mixers are designed to take dynamic microphones. The one that I recommend uh, is the Shure SM58 uh, but that said there is and I'm actually going to look for it now for you because I always forget the name of it uh, but there is a um, a really good value dynamic microphone from a completely unknown brand, uh, but uh, when I see it, I will know it. Uh, it's like $20 or something, it's ridiculous value. Uh, and loads of people swear by it as a great one to go buy for a start. Uh, so I'm just having a little peek now uh, and see if I can find that one for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a US brand and it's just one of those, uh, one of those brands that you see uh, with cheap gear a lot. I think it's like mono price or something like that, but I can't at the moment uh, see see it. So until I find it, uh, or if I can't find it, I won't show it to you, but until, until I find it, uh, I will uh, I will just keep typing here for a second. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's, there's you can pay the short ones about $100, I think, um, but, uh, but these are really, really good value. Uh, this one here, I think, is not far off it. Let me just have a look and I'll go down to the, before I show you, I'll go down to the um, people also buy because if the one I'm thinking of isn't that one, then it's going to be in those for sure. Uh, so uh, yeah, it is this one. Right, let's show it to you. So it's this microphone here. Uh, it's, uh, it's come across in Spanish for some reason, but anyway, uh, mono price uh, vocal mic. Uh, just go and look for this one on uh, on. Amazon, it's like $25. It's a really good value uh, little microphone. You need an XLR cable to plug into it as well. Uh, and anything with four and a half or more stars on Amazon around the $20, $30 mark that says um, dynamic microphone is gonna be all right to start with. You know, the one I've used for years is the Shure SM58, just because it is the micro, whoops, it is the microphone uh, that will last you all your life. Uh, but that said, you know, you can get one for $20, $30. Throw it in your bag, especially if you don't often use a microphone, right? And you just need one just in case. Uh, so anyway, I hope, uh, hope that is useful to you. I think, was it Tyler asked that question? Uh, so uh, I never thought that hip hop would take it this far, says Henry. What are you talking about there, Henry? Let us know. Um, hello to... Um, to Mark uh, and also to Midnight Wolf, who's got a question, who says, is it best to use a facade or a DJ booth table to help make things look cleaner and neater for stuff like weddings? It just depends how clean and neat it looks really. I mean, some of the DJ tables now are really good that fold up and they've got all the stuff in them, uh, but a facade, facades can look great as well. Facades are just the kind of cloth that covers everything. Uh, it just depends really. I think the most important thing is to get something that works for you uh, it's about fitting in the back of your vehicle. It's about easy setup and easy breakdown uh, and what looks right compared to other people in your area. You know, get something that works for you. Uh, the good thing about the facades, the cloth, is that you can get matching ones for your speaker stands, right? So that you've got two speaker stands and your, your main table. But even if you're gonna use those, you know, some are good and some are bad. So I don't think there's a bad, an there's a, there's a bad or a good answer to that question or a good choice there, Midnight Wolf. It just depends on how it looks and, and you know, what it costs and how it, as I say, how it fits in your vehicle. Because some of those big tables that fold up, they take a lot more room than the smaller stuff that you just kind of hide behind cloth. And also how you're gonna light them because lighting can make a pretty boring facade look suddenly really, really good. Uh, DJ Newis is new, uh, first time live, so thank you for being here live for the first time. Uh, this is from Pedger, who says, um, I got an MC7000, uh, but I don't like Serato very much. Is it okay to use Virtual DJ instead, or should I just stick to Serato? Uh, it's a really good question. You know, Serato is very popular DJ software, but it isn't for everyone. Not everyone likes it, uh, and that's absolutely absolutely fine. Uh, the point is that, vir that Virtual DJ uh, is very, very good at working with pretty much everything. And Virtual DJ works really nicely with the Denon DJ MC7000, really nicely. 
uh, and you'll have absolutely no problem if you want to use your virtual DJ license with this instead. So just go right ahead uh, and enjoy. You'll find that the mapping is tight, you'll find that all the functions work really well uh, and that uh, you have a lot of fun with it. So just don't, don't think twice, just get on with it, it'll be fine. Uh, Okay, so hashtag ask, hashtag ASK, please, if you want to ask a question. Uh, Jason's got a question about YouTube and about promoting yourself on YouTube. Uh, I've got my own YouTube channel. How can I do a long DJ mix on there without getting copyright issues? Any advice on this, please? Uh, there is a uh, article on Digital DJ Tips that can help you. Uh, so if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, uh, here's a tip for you, anything you wanna know, Click that magnifying glass and type in here. So if I type in YouTube, YouTube streaming, I should find one of the top articles is this one here. Three vital tips for DJing on YouTube without copyright hassle. So you do what I just did. You head over there uh, and scroll down. Uh, we talked to you about it in this video. Uh, and also I talk you through exactly how to do it, how to avoid this kind of thing happening on your videos. Uh, we know how to do it. We've done this many, many, many times ourselves and nearly always what I teach you in this video will work. Not always, but like 99% of the time. So you head over there to watch the video and look at the article and it will show you how to stop getting blocked on YouTube, even if you do long DJ mixes as we've done for hours, uh, many, many hours on YouTube. 100%, 99% successfully. Uh, so Jason, I hope you find that useful. Uh, so uh, people chatting away about the DJ furniture stuff. Mixmaster G says, especially if you're a wedding or specialty DJ, then furniture with everything built in can make the difference and it's pretty easy to transport. So thanks for, uh, thanks for jumping in there. JP Lacey says, hello DJs around the world. How about some sort of a digital DJ tips convention in the future? Well, we did think about this and then COVID hit and then we kind of put the idea very much on a back burner. Uh, we'll never say never about that, but I don't think now's the right time to start talking about meetups personally. Uh, so um, this is a great question from Papa D. What's the correct way to connect an active sub to active tops with XLR cables? This is a great question, and I'll tell you why this is a great question. Because if you've got a DJ system, even a professional one, like the one I've got here, the Pioneer DJ XDJ RX3, if you've got a system like this, and you wanna plug it into a subwoofer and into two top speakers as well, you've got a problem. Because you've got two XLR sockets on here, off camera, there they are the two XLR sockets for plugging your master output in, but you haven't got any socket on any DJ systems, even the most, uh, even the most um, professional ones. This is a pretty professional system here, but even the most professional ones, they don't have a socket to plug in a subwoofer. So a subwoofer is a big bass speaker that goes on the floor, on the floor and just gives you the boom, 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 boom. None of the detail. The detail comes out of your top speakers, right? So how do you plug it in? Well, it's very, very simple. I have got down here on the floor, I can probably pick it up without putting the whole broadcast off the air. My team hate it when I do this. They absolutely hate it. Do stuff that hasn't been planned. But hey, here is how you do it. This is the actual subwoofer that goes with those two KRK speakers on my left and right. And the way you do it is on the back of this, and if I actually move the XDJ, to one side for a second. I can actually show you this on the close-up camera. So let's do that. Let's move the XDJ. I'll unplug the XDJ from there. I'll unplug it totally actually. I'll move it over here and then I'll bring this up onto the counter so I can show you exactly how it works on the back of this sub. It might be a little bit out of focus on the camera, but we'll give it a go. So this is the back of the sub, right? So what you got here is you've got ins and outs. So the inputs here are where I would plug my normal outputs in from my DJ controller or my mixer or my DJ system. So the XLRs from there or the TRSs uh, or the usual little RCAs would go in here. I'd use my normal leads that I would normally plug into my big speakers and plug in the left and right here, right? And then these outputs here duplicate the two on the back of my DJ console. So I just need 
two extra leads and then this one goes off to one speaker, this one goes off to the other speaker, right? So the point about this is that this unit is where you plug in your DJ system and your DJ system goes into here, this deals with it all, this takes the signal and sends it off out to your speakers. So that is usually the correct way of plugging these in. Uh, and whichever system you've got will have a way of doing it because the man manufacturers of these know that you haven't got a separate output just for the subwoofer. So just be you know, confident when you're buying them that that's okay. That is the way it plugs in. And you know, the cheapest DJ controller can plug into a subwoofer and two, two um, satellite speakers uh, in that way. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't need anything special at all on your DJ controller. So I hope that cleared that one up for you. It's a question we get asked quite a lot, Papa D, actually. It's just something that, you know, until you know it, you don't know it, do you? So, uh, so uh, yo, G, it's DJ C, says Charlie. Hello. Um, so you don't like my music, just agreeing with me on the dynamic microphone. Yep, it's a, it's a, it's a given, that one. Uh, I will connect my DJ controller to a mixer. Which one should I control the volume on? Christian asks. This is a really, really good question. Uh, if I connect my DJ controller to a mixer, which one should I control the volume on? Uh, so the, the one you want to ultimately control the volume on is the, the one nearest to the speakers that you've got control of. So for instance, let's say you had, back to talking about speakers, let's say you've got um, a mobile DJ set up, right? And you've got two big speakers and maybe a subwoofer and they've all got their own volume controls on the back, haven't they? Then you've got a, a DJ mixer uh, or, or just a live mixer. That's got its own volume controls on it. Maybe you've then got a controller that you're actually DJing from and that's plugged into the mixer and you're DJing on that and that's got its own volume controls on as well. In fact, it's got two, hasn't it? It's got the master and it's got the volume controls for the channels, right? So which blinking volume controls do you use to control the overall volume? And the the way you do this is the volume controls you use to control the overall volume is the one that's nearest to the speakers that you've got easy control over, right? So let's say you've got two speakers out on the dance floor. You can't literally say, oh, it's time to turn the volume up now. I'll go out there and turn both of those up. Of course you can't. You'd be kind of the DJ staggering around the dance floor with the speakers wobbling as he tries to sort them out, right? Is that silly? That's all set earlier. The, 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 the one that's nearest to the speakers that isn't the speakers in this instance is the one that you use. So therefore, if you've got your DJ console plugged into a bigger mixer, plugged, which then goes off to the speakers, it's the bigger mixer that you'll use. So to answer your question, Christian, if you can con connect your DJ controller to a mixer, which one should you control the volume on? You'll control it on the mixer. Uh, because the, the correct way to, it's called gain staging. The correct way to gain stage your music is to have every volume as loud as possible without distorting right from the very beginning all the way through the chain, right? And then the last one is the one that ultimately controls the overall volume. So you're, you're feeding a nice, clean, loud signal all the way down the chain to the final one that you've got any control over and that's the one that you will adjust. Uh, so it's just uh, something that is again a question we get asked a lot. And again, it's actually on Digital DJ Tips. If you head over to the, uh, the um, the same search area and type gain staging in, uh, you'll find an article where we go through uh, exactly what you need to do to get that right. Uh, it's uh, a little while back, I think, our gain staging article, because I can't see it on first search, which is unusual. Um, so let's just try volume. Sometimes you've got to try more than one to, uh, to get this right. There we go. How to set your volume levels like a pro when DJing. Uh, go and head over there, have a look at this article and video, uh, and you'll find exactly how to do it correctly. Mark's the video there. Live questions, people. We're live here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio. By the way, if you're new to this and if you're enjoying this, uh, all we want you to do is join us. Just head to digitaldjtips.com slash join. It's free. Uh, it's the best way to improve your DJing. We send you a weekly newsletter packed with news and features and reviews and free tutorials and mixes by our tutors like Jazzy Jeff, like DJ Hype, like Layback Luke, like DJ Angelo who just won the DMC 2021 with JFB. We've got the best DJs here teaching and our newsletter is the best place to access them and they do so much for free for you. So look, you've just got to go there and sign up. That's the easiest way of doing it. You get a copy of the book, Rock the Dance Floor, which has got our five 
steps for DJing success detailed in it. Uh, you also get a copy of the gear guide down there, uh, which is being renewed at the moment for 2022. It's going to be coming out next year, but uh, that's the current one. You'll get a copy of that. And this is all for free. So if you are new to Digital DJ Tips, the leading online DJ school, and you're not on that list, get on it. That's the best way to stay uh, up to speed with what's going on in DJing. Um, so get it done. Uh, right, next question is from Clara, who says, I'm also sneakily watching it work. It's difficult to join now since you changed the timings. Uh, hello to you over on Twitch there, Dr. Clara, as well. Yeah, you know, when we changed the timings, we knew it wouldn't be good for everyone, but uh, it's good for me because it means I get home and I get to have tea with my kids uh, at the end of the day, which I couldn't do before because I had to run out in the evening and come and do a live, so hey. Um, so... Uh, the next live question, and now is the point where I'm going to remind you, hashtag ASK, hashtag ask, because now I'm going to filter by hashtag ask because we're getting too busy for me to not do that. Um, DJ Prince, hi, I'm a Jamaican DJ without a controller. Is there any giveaway competition coming up soon? Every year we run the digital DJ census, which is Literally 35,000 DJs last year completed it. When we ask you about your DJing, your equipment, your software, your dreams, your gigs, how much money you've earned from DJing, whether you're a musician, whether you live stream, what websites you go to, it's our annual industry standard, if you like, um, DJ census, DJ survey. And we send the results to everyone in the DJ industry and we share them with you as well. Part of that is we have a prize giveaway, prize draw. And this year, uh, it's currently being finalized, but last year we had, again, $35,000 worth of prizes to give away controllers. We had a full Pioneer DJ CDJ system to give away last year. I can confirm that the top prize this year is a Denon DJ complete system, and I mean complete. You get two SC6000 media players, an X1850 Prime mixer, and two LC6000 um, secondary players as well. So that's four physical decks and a four channel mixer. That's our top prize. It's worth thousands and thousands and thousands. And loads of smaller prizes as well, controllers and uh, stuff like that. So yes, we have got a big giveaway coming up. We do it every year. We'll be launching it probably in about three weeks time, I would guess. Keep your eye on Digital DJ Tips for that. That's where to find out about it. I told you it's worth signing up uh, and uh, we'll let you, know, let you know more when we have got that uh, ready to share. Right, this is from Joshua. I'm torn between getting a new mark, DJ to go to. Where's our little DJ to go to? Jumped off to somewhere else. Uh, and all the new mark mix track pro FX. I look to start DJing on one of these, so I'm a total noob. Uh, looking to have something portable for easy gigs. Go for the new mark mix track pro FX. The, the DJ to go to is great, but it's very limited. The, the mix track pro FX has got pretty much everything you're ever going to need for your first years of DJing, and you can play small gigs on it and stuff. Whereas the, the DJ to go to is just too small. Uh, for that stuff. It's a great second controller, but I wouldn't recommend it as your first one. Definitely the Mixtrack Pro FX there. Uh, George has just got a new Hercules 500 Impulse. What software can I use? You can use the Dejuiced software that comes with it, and also Serato works with that controller as well. Uh, DJ Randall says, recent conversation about setting the channel faders to 85% to make gain adjustments or to use the channel gain or trim knob. Which one is better? Right, let's head back and talk about this. This is something we get asked all the time as well. I'm gonna put this away again, put this away and get the controller back. And let's talk where to set your channel faders. So here's the thing with channel faders. There is no right and wrong here, but some DJs like to do it in the way I'm gonna show you now and other DJs like to do it in a different way. So when you're setting this to get your signals all right. I can't, I'm not gonna plug it in again to show you this. I don't really need to. Uh, let's say you've got a track loaded on this deck here, but you're currently playing this deck here, right? So this deck's playing away to your audience. This one here, you've just loaded a track on. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use the trim control at the top to get a nice high level that's not into the red, right? So that's gonna make sure that this track looks pretty cool for mixing into this one. And then every time you load a track, you do that, right? That is part of what we were talking about earlier, gain staging. Uh, and that means that the, basically when you're mixing stuff together, they're always the same volume. If you don't do that, you might mix a track in and it's just naturally quieter, right? So that's what we use this for. We use this to get the, the meter for that track so it's nice and high without, without going into the red when the track 
is at its loudest. Now, when we've done that, this control here, when it's all the way up, the track will be as loud as possible without going into the red. And as you move it down, you're gonna get a lower, um, a lower amount of audio. So some DJs, most DJs, me included actually, tend to DJ like that. And then if for some reason, this one's a little bit too loud or a little bit too quiet, you can just tweak this a little bit and it probably will be all right. Other DJs though, like to do what I just said and then DJ with these at around like say 80%. Right, so there's a tiny bit of a gap at the top. And that means that if they wanna make adjustments to the balance between the two tracks, they can do it using the little bit that's left at the top. Right, because they've only mixed up to about the 80% mark. And so they've got a bit of give at the top of their faders. And that means they never have to touch these having set, set them. That's probably the more proper way of doing it. But honestly, it doesn't matter. If you set these okay, and you're keeping an eye on your meters, it's fine to DJ. You know, the reason people like to DJ with these all the way at the top is it's very easy to flick the track in and out like this, right? But if you're there, if you're, you're, your returning level is there, then uh, you know you see DJs putting their thumb there, so when they flick the track, it doesn't go all the way and stuff. So that's why, but honestly, just keep an eye on the meters, and as long as they're not in the red, you're gonna be good. Uh, there's no 100% right or wrong way of doing that. And uh, like I say, I, I think I tend to do it just with the faders all the way open and then just any little tweaks I'll do on the gains. That's just me personally. Uh, this is from Dieter who says, I'm interested in taking the laid back Luke bootleg mashup and re-edits course. However, I'm not really into Luke's music or EDM in general. I'd buy the course to learn Ableton for creating re-drums, warps and DJ friendly edits of disco and native tunes. Do you think this is the right course for me? Absolutely Dieter. The reason I think it's the right course for you is that it's about the techniques. It doesn't matter about the music. And indeed, you'll be quite surprised at what Luke does in that course. He does some pretty funky disco type, open, loose, funk, you know, non-EDM stuff, especially towards the end. So it's a very varied course in the music, probably more varied than you might think. Uh, and also he creates completely different versions of tunes. So he deliberately makes tunes in different genres that aren't EDM from EDM and the other way as well. So 100%, you'll get all the skills you just talked about, you will get from that course. Uh, and Luke has got a very wide DJ um, uh, taste, very wide taste in music. And you know, when we were making that course, we were pulling out some right classics from his collection, uh, everything from rock to, you know, old 80s pop to, as I say, disco and funk, and of course, EDM and techno and stuff. So yeah, definitely, you'll, you'll, you'll get a lot of value from it. Remember, all our courses have got our one year money back guarantee. So if it's not right for you, you can return it. But I don't want you to waste the time finding that out. You know, that's the point. Time is money, right? But I, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be wasting your time. It, it would be perfect for you, for sure. Uh, so um, Craig says, I saw a really cool video with, of the Hercules DJ control mix. Uh, I really fancy it as it's a portable option. What's the differences to the Newmark DJ to go two touch? It's actually slightly better than the DJ to go two touch. I forget why now. I think it's got filters on it and the DJ to go two touch hasn't. Uh, yeah, it's a great little controller. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it. So Craig, don't think twice, go get it. Um, John says, are you aware of what is the quality of files used when streaming with Tidal? They upgraded their service to high fidelity recently. I'm wondering if it works in DJ software. They've always been hi-fi uh, Tidal. It's the other ones who've been playing catch up. Uh, the, uh, yes, the high, the high um, quality option is an option in Tidal. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, if anyone knows that for sure, please share. Or if you know I'm wrong, please share as well. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get that in your DJ software as well, John. Uh, Bose S1 Pro or HK Move 8? No idea, not, taste, not uh, tested the Bose S1 Pro, but the HK Move 8 are great little speakers, Adam. I can't tell you that much. Um, so Kent, two weeks ago, I ordered the Tractor S4 Mark III, but I've had constant updates about delays. Is it a component shortage or a lack of truck drivers? Uh, it is probably all of those things. Um, yeah, you know, that is unfortunately the way it is right now. So uh, good luck, Kent. I hope it'll arrive soon. Uh, it's not just tractor, it's not just DJ controllers, uh, and it's not just DJ gear in general, is it? It's everything at the moment. Um, so Housie says, would you consider offering a uh, payment plan for some of your courses, i.e. Serato Made Easy or Mixing Power Skills? Uh, we do have a payment plan, but only for our complete courses. So if you head over to the D Digital DJ Tips courses page on the website and scroll down, uh, it's these courses here at the top, the complete ones, the flagships, the complete DJ course, Scratching for Controller DJs, 
dance music formula and the new mobile DJ blueprint. These are the ones that have a three-part payment plan. Everything else, unfortunately, doesn't. However, the good news is that, guess what? Black Friday is just around the corner and there's gonna be some deep, deep discounts on our courses uh, at that time, Housey. So uh, save your pennies for another week or so and um, come and dive in. And again, we'll let you know first here. There's a reason for signing up, digitaldjtips.com slash join. We will send you all the offers to your email inbox so you can peruse them in the comfort of your own home. Uh, but they're big, you know, I think it's up to about 45% off our courses just for those few days. So it's definitely worth, uh, definitely worth waiting till then. And uh, a lot of people just buy all the courses they think they're going to do over the next year in one go. So, uh, so um, keep an eye out for that. It's going to be happening very, very soon. Um, this is another good one from Charlie. Uh, Christmas party, any cool tips? Uh, again, we've got an article coming up uh, about how to DJ Christmas parties, but it's something we've done before. So I'm just, uh, I'm just um, doing the old, uh, the old look on digital DJ tips to give you some advice. If you search Christmas parties in our search bar at the top, you'll find all these things. Uh, seven things average DJs do wrong at office parties. 10 guilt-free songs for your festive sets. Your Christmas party disasters uh, and other stuff like that. So lots of uh, good articles already there, but I'm pretty sure there's a new one that we wrote recently that's going to be going live quite soon. Did you know there's about 6,000 articles on Digital DJ Tips? 6,000 articles in the last 11 years. It's an absolute treasure trove of stuff to help you. Do go and type into that search bar stuff that you might be wondering about because it's the best place to get our articles all on one page where you can just, and another tip, hold down shift when you click on the articles individually on the, on the results uh, and they'll all open at the top in tabs. If I wanted to read these three here, I'd hold down shift, I've got my shift key held down now, go like this and then they all open at the top and there we go, you've got them all to read one by one across the top there. Uh, so that is definitely uh, a little tip if you're not used to, um, you know, binge reading in, in, DJ, in, in, in web browsers. That's how to do it. Okay, um, DJ Monster, have you heard anything about using turntables with the Prime 4? Uh, I mean, Den and DJ have got their own turntables. I don't think they make them anymore. I'm looking at them over in our store area over there. Uh, but any turntables will work with the Den and DJ Prime 4. Just plug them in the back and switch to, I think you switch on the back to turntable. Uh, but yeah, you can use any turntables with it. They'll work fine. Uh, so this is from uh, Harish. Uh, I'm a beginner DJ. I need to get speakers for practice at home. What do you suggest? Thanks, Harish. So beginner DJs, for uh, beginner speakers for practicing at home. It depends how much you want to spend, really. I mean, you can get good speakers for not very much money nowadays. Pioneer DJ, I, mean, I say not very much, but you're still going to be paying money. Uh, but Pioneer DJ have got a great set of speakers that we have just uh, reviewed, actually, but the review's not live yet. Uh, these ones here, the DM50Ds, these are really, really good. Uh, these will do you for DJ practice, for getting started in production. Uh, they'll even do you, dare I say it, for very small, like in your living room, parties. I wouldn't take them anywhere else. Uh, and these are uh, a couple of hundred a pair. So they're not the cheapest in the world, but they are good. Uh, so, you know, I'm just off the top of my head because we've just reviewed them. Uh, they are a good option. Uh, there's also a little M audio speaker. I forget the name of it. Um, I will um, try and remember the name of that one. Uh, I think it's called the M something. Let me just try and Google that for you. Uh, M audio speakers. I will recognize them the second I see them. The little M Audio, the BXs, that's right, the M Audio BX speakers. Now, some of these are quite cheap. Uh, these little ones here, uh, the M Audio BX3s, uh, I'm not sure what the price of these is, but uh, I think they're a little bit cheaper than the Pioneers, for instance. Uh, and these are good sounding little speakers for your desktop, uh, but also, um, you know, they're a massive step up from the speakers that you would use built into your, into your computer or whatever. Um, I'm not sure the price of those, but uh, they're cheaper than the Pioneers. So that's another, another model we know people have enjoyed using over the years. Uh, so any more speaker recommendations for Harish? Let us know in the comments. Harish is on YouTube in the chat, so you could always uh, chat away to Harish down there. Please only ask your questions once, people. Uh, what are some other things you can set to your channel faders? For instance, I have Serato Sampler Master Volume set to my channel fader 4 on my controller. This is a really good tip. 
Uh, and this is a tip that, again, there's so much stuff that you're asking. It's like there's some psychic stuff going on between you and you and Digital DJ Tips at the moment, because I literally submitted an article an hour and a half ago to production, which is called How to Use Your DJ Sampler on Your Software. So all software has got a DJ sampler built in, like Serato, Tractor, Recordbox, Virtual DJ, where you can play samples, like you can play DJ idents and you can play DJ drops, you can play all those... Um, sound effects like the, the cheesy fog horns, but also, you know, big, big interesting sweeps and other kinds of sound effects. You can also play uh, drum hits, so just one-off drums, like, you know, kick drum, snare, hi-hats and stuff, and you can finger drum on your pads on your, on your um, DJ system. And also, you can play whole drum loops, whole loops that just play in sync with your decks. You know, the DJ sampler is an underused part of um, DJ software. Uh, and one of the things about your DJ sampler is it will normally play through the master output. So there'll be a volume control either on the DJ software screen or sometimes on the controller itself for the sampler. And then that will just be mixed with what's going on on your decks, right? In other words, it goes straight to the, the you know, the XLRs or the TRSs or the RCAs on the back of your DJ controller and off to your speakers. And you get no further control over it. But that doesn't have to be the case. If you're DJing on, say, a Pioneer DDJ-1000 SRT for Serato or a DDJ-1000 for Recordbox, just to give you two examples, they've got four channels, just like this one here. They've got four channels. Uh, so, oh, in fact, that hasn't got four channels. Duh, it's got two. I thought I had uh, a different uh, system on there. Uh, of course, oh, we set that up a minute ago, didn't we? Uh, but no, if you've got four channels on your mixer, what you can do is you can set your sampler to go instead of to the master to like channel three or four. Now the good thing about that is if you don't normally use channels three and four, then you get all the EQ and then you get the filter and then you can also potentially route it through the effects as well. So you can do really cool things with your samples. So that's another good thing to do. What else can you put on channels three and four? Well, if you haven't got a sampler, like this is this hasn't got a sampler, no standalone units have, uh, then you can use either channels three and four or in this case, you know, there's an auxiliary channel here so you can set your auxiliary channel to a portable input there, which is quite cool. Uh, then you can use, like, you can get a lead uh, and you can plug in your phone, for instance. So get your phone, get a little sampler app on your phone, uh, and there's loads of them, and put some pads on here, get your audio lead, plug it into the extra channel, and then you can be triggering samples from here. I mean, how simple is that? And also, by the way, you can use it as a backup. So should your DJ system go down or whatever, your USB drive gets corrupted or someone rips it out, whatever, uh, you could just got your phone plugged in on a spare channel, you can hit go. Uh, and that can get you out of jail. That can stop the music stopping. So uh, your phone's another good one then. Uh, there goes my bag. Also, extra decks, like extra CDs, extra um, uh, a turntable maybe. Uh, or you could have another DJ with their controller plugged into your spare channels. Uh, and uh, also you could have external like a synthesizer or a drum machine uh, that you can be mixing with other stuff as well. So there's loads of things uh, to answer your question. You could plug into your extra channels if you wanted. Even plug a microphone in. Um, uh, in with Tractor, that's what you would do. Your microphones go through your extra channels. Uh, and, and mic up a bongo player or something. Let's get things a, a live DJing hybrid. Uh, and we've done that before as well. So yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, so here's a good tip. I'm going to write this down because I always do when we get tips like this from Mac Warrior who says, I saw a new movie on Disney Plus about DJs called Spin. It was quite a good movie. So uh, thank you for that. Spin on Disney Plus. I will go and have a look at that. Um, DJ Ziggy Z, most of the clubs in my area use CDJ 2000s and DJM Nexus 2. Is the XDJ RX3 a good choice for practicing muscle memory? Absolutely it is. Because compared to a CDJ 3000 or 2000, they're, they're very, very, very similar. Uh, here's a CDJ 3000. Let's get this on this side where uh, it won't clash with the USB. So we've got our looping here. Got our looping here. Actually, you can't see that, can you? I'll just put it next to it like that. We've got our looping here. We've got our looping here. We've got our hot cues, uh, our, our, our memory cues here. We've got our memory cues here. Jog adjust here. Jog adjust here. Um, our tempos and master tempos here. 
our fader, main fader here. Uh, the way our the way our um, cues and plays and pause are laid out is the same. The way track search and search is the same. Directions in the same place. Uh, our um, jog wheel feels and looks pretty similar. Not exactly the same. The display in the middle is exactly the same though. The cues are in a slightly different place, but then moving on to the mixer, screen's the same size. Exactly the same navigation tools and controls around here. So our, let's just get that out of the way now and I'll pick up the Pioneer mixer to show you the mixer side of it. Uh, is it somewhere accessible though is the question. No. Yes, it is accessible people. How cool is that? So this is a DJM 2000, uh, sorry, the DJM 900 mixer. So you can't see all of that, unfortunately. Uh, but um, again, let's just look at this one first. You've got your channels down the middle. You've got your sound color effects where my thumb is there. You've got your main effects strip down here. And you've got uh, your effect on off button there and your little display up here. Now let's have a look at the XDJ RX3. You've got your sound color effects here and this stuff was the same as well. You've got your main effects down here. You've got your effects on off there. So the layout really does ape the CDJs and the XDJ and the um, DJM 900 mixer on this. It's not 100% there, but it's certainly close enough for you to be getting muscle memory. Uh, so yes, if you are thinking of buying Pioneer standalone gear for the reason of having it work really nicely, when it comes to learning where everything is for getting into the clubs, it certainly will, um, Ziggy Z. So uh, this is from Didier. What do you think about the global chip shortage? In Italy, the Prime 2 has gone from 1,800 to 2,200 euros. I'd love to buy one of the standalone Denon systems. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. Uh, so what I think about it is, I think it's the new normal. Call me a pessimist, but I think, uh, I think we're gonna be seeing this for several years to come. Uh, I wouldn't hang around and wait for the prices to go down again, put it that way. Do not ask your questions more than once, please, people. Uh, I have the control tone coming through my speakers. Uh, it's a new Reloop Elite and Serato on Windows. Any idea why? This is when you're trying to get your uh, DVS to work, right? No, you've got it set up wrong. Uh, you are literally listening to the DVS records. Uh, so you just, I mean, I can't go into it now, but just trust me, you don't need to do anything to fix that other than read the instructions and set it up right, DJ Slowbridge. So there's good news for you there. There's nothing wrong with your mixer. Uh, no, Mo, I didn't get an M1 chip uh, Mac yet. I'm very happy with the one I've got. I will, I'll be buying the M2 chip probably by the time it's time to upgrade my Mac. Uh, I don't believe in just buying the, the newest stuff for the hell of it. Um, so I will be getting one, but uh, two or three years away, I think yet. Um, so uh, hashtag ask if you would like to ask a question here live. I'm gonna get out here in about five minutes. I've got a lot to uh, finish off before I can get home today. So uh, just one or two final questions. This is from David who says, I use Tractors F1s to play drum loops over tracks with my S4 Mark III. F1 is a really nice, like long, slim tractor controller with pads on it. Uh, should I pre-EQ the lows uh, in production to avoid low frequency phase cancellations or simply filter them out live. Well, you're being very, very um, uh, diligent there, David. Uh, and I would say there's no harm in pre-EQing them or doing them live. Um, it's just depending, you know, most DJs when they're dropping samples and stuff into their sets will just do that stuff live as a muscle memory thing. But hey, if you know you're gonna be using them for that purpose, then great. This is about not muddying up the bass, right? So when we're DJing people, uh, you often see DJs with two tracks playing together. Uh, and they'll have the bass EQ down on one of them uh, and then they'll switch the bass like that. Now this can be for a couple of reasons. It can be because the bass line's coming in on the new track and you wanna switch it in and get the old one out of the way. The bass is the thing which will start to move your track more easily than any of the other EQs from one to the other. So taking that one out won't harm the mix as much once the bass is all over here. But also having too much bass going on will cause all kinds of unnecessary issues of phase cancellation where there's just too many bass frequencies flying around and kind of instead of making the bass sound punchy and sharp, they're literally cancelling each other out. And you don't need 
two kick drums kicking away underneath your mix necessarily. So you often see DJs like swapping the bass and not having more than one bass playing at the time. And if you've got a, a sampler here or something else like to drop extra sounds in, which is what our, um, our community member, sorry, I forget your name for a second, was asking, you know, you're triggering other sounds over the top, but you've also got bass in. So the question was, do I just take the bass out uh, when I'm making the samples or do I use the filters available to me on the mixer to do that? And the answer is, both are good. Uh, I don't think there's no DJ or so you've got to do it one way or another. It's just down to personal preference and workflow really on that. Um, and we will have a final question here, I'm afraid, because I have to get out here. This is DJ Incompetent. I love your name. Uh, with engine lighting in Engine OS becoming a default feature, does Prime 4 direct link connections like Re Re Resolume now work with engine lighting simultaneously? No idea, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't know what happens with um, Resolume and the engine lighting stuff built in. Um, probably nothing uh, because they've got their own software. So I don't think there's gonna be any clever link in with that stuff. Um, and finally, Taser, I've got no idea, unfortunately, when a replacement is coming for the XDJ XZ or XZ. Big Daz is asking about the Jazzy Jeff course. Is the Jazzy Jeff course coming for Christmas? Uh, it is coming very, very soon. Uh, but I think Christmas is probably a bit of a push uh, because of uh, how great it is and how much work is going into it. So no, I'd say don't hold your Christmas pennies off for the Jazzy Jeff course. Um, so uh, if you are interested in being taught to DJ, not by lesser DJs, not by people saying, I will teach you what Jazzy Jeff does, but by Jazzy Jeff himself, go to Digital DJ Tips and click on this on the homepage. It will take you to this page here where Jazzy Jeff uh, will be pleased to take your, this is just a test email address, by the way, it wouldn't go anywhere, even if you did send something to it. Uh, to, this is, a, well, Jazzy Jeff himself will take your email address from you and he will enter you into a competition to win one of three one-on-one -on -one DJ lessons with him, which are gonna be uh, announced in the new year. But more importantly for everyone, apart from the three lucky winners of that, Je Jeff will email you when his course is ready. Uh, and Jazzy Jeff's How to DJ Write is an awesome course. I know that because we're in the middle of making it now and it really is something special. Uh, we've got so much to tell you about, which we can't tell you about now, but when we're ready, we will. But look, all you gotta do is head over there and register by putting your email address, a real one, not a fake one like I made up here for testing purposes. Uh, and uh, we will email you back when we've got um, news on that and also to let you know if you've won. Right, people, uh, I have to get out of here now. Thank you very much for joining us for our Thursday Q&A Live. Keep asking questions on Facebook especially, uh, but you can also do this if you're watching the recording on YouTube, do it underneath, and we will get to you. We'll do our best to answer them for you. And if you're not a member, go join, digitaldjtips.com slash join. You get a free copy of this, but more importantly, uh, you get our weekly newsletter, which is the best way of improving your DJing, known to man. So go and do that. Uh, but meanwhile, for me, Phil, see you next week, next Tuesday and next Thursday at the same time, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, get good, get out there, and make the moments. Bye-bye.